Okay, councilors, we're going to call the meeting to order for the President. city council. Um, just, just one. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> for the city council finance committee meeting for Monday evening, November the uh, the nineteenth. And just before, um, just before we uh, do that, uh, just want to uh, take a moment of silence also for. Um, uh, Robert DeGrace, and um, Bobby DeGrace was a uh, member of the Brockton Fire Department for a good many years, but let alone um, his brother also a member of the Brockton Fire Department for many years, and uh, he moved to Florida some time ago, some few years ago, and he, he just passed away um, over the weekend, but uh, the DeGrace family, as we all know, has been known in the city, and they were very, very well known on the, on the east side of Brockton. So I just want to take a moment of silence for him uh, and to his family. May he rest in peace. Yeah. Council Darren Cohen. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would like to ask for a moment um, of silence for Fabula Ippolit, um, who passed away yesterday, unfortunately. She was, how do I put this, one of the best Brocktonians that I know. And um, she was everywhere, doing everything, at Brockton High School and different kind of activities. And it's so unfortunate to know that um, we lost someone like her. So I would like to ask a moment of exactly. silence on her I'll behalf. Silence for her, exactly. Thank you. And may she rest in peace as well. Councilors, just before uh, just before we do begin, I believe you received an email uh, over the weekend or, or before the weekend indicating that we were going to have our meetings um, here, and we're going to remain and we are going to remain here right through to um, January until um, a point where hopefully the elevator will be complete. We're just not sure about that, but we will remain here through the whole month of December, and um, probably the first uh, could be the first meeting too in, in uh, January. Um, only because I think it's um, the locations, uh, it, it makes sense to be here. Um, the setup is good, um, seating is new, but it's also a little bit easier access where we are winter months where we just have to come in right at the door and the parking lot's right there. And I'm um, not being trying to be stingy, but it's a little bit easier for me as well. So um, uh, that, that we're going to be uh, we're gonna be doing it. And if anyone needs it for uh, naturally for subcommittee meetings, then we can make those uh, um, make those arrangements. Um, and so we'll be here next week as, as well. Now, don't forget on December the 3rd, just a reminder, while it's fresh in my, in my head, that uh, we'll have a 6 o'clock special meeting of the City Council to do what we just love to do. I don't know if we love doing it, and I don't think the residents love us doing it either, but we have no choice. We have to set a tax rate. And um, you're receiving information, I think, as we as I speak, if you have not received it as of yet, but you, you will. So, And if you have questions in regards to it, I'd ask that you, you talk to uh, uh, Mr. O'Donnell as well. But, um, you know, we definitely, um, you know, it's, it's something that uh, always takes a little bit of time, but, you know, it is what it is, and it has to, and that has to be done uh, as well. So if anyone else has anything else, just while it's fresh in my house, Council Sullivan. I want to remind everybody, uh, Ordinance Committee meeting tomorrow night, which is Tuesday, uh, November 20th, 6.30. Not six, not in this room, it's in the cafeteria here at the Island School. Right, so that's tomorrow night, 6.30. And two agenda items strictly about marijuana. Okay, great. And Council Borgard? Uh, will that be a public hearing on uh, the 3rd? At 6 p.m. There, there will be at, at the beginning. There is a pub. There is a public hearing. Yes, it's always ha it's always created by having a public hearing. Yes, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, but it's it's also for for us to be doing what we have to do. It's just more of a listening factor, so than anything else. But <laughs> anything else with that? Okay, seeing none. Um, who's my clerk? She's over here. Okay, item number one. Appropriation of the total grant in the amount of $680,516 from U.S. Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs Fiscal Year 18 Strategies Policing Innovations Grant to City of Brockton Police Department Fiscal Year 18 Strategies for Policing Innovations Grant Fund. This is a multi-year award with four annual budgets of $243,920, 211 $211,832, $207,782, $17,432 applying respectively beginning in 2018. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Chief Crowley, Chief Police. Good evening, Chief. How are you? Good. Anything that you want to explain to us in regards to it, or it's pretty much cut and dry to something we have every year, isn't it? Yeah, this is actually a first year we've seen this grant. We have one of five uh, communities in the United States to receive it. Great. As 
a grant to target gun violence, uh, which relates to opioid use and education and treatment process for opioid use. Make a favorable recommendation back full council. Second. Um, motion been made and second to send back to the council. On the motion, Council Rodriguez. I just have a quick question for the chief, if I could. Uh, chief, what's the um, what's the argument in not um, basically funding it at a slightly higher level on the fourth year? Uh, because when you look at it, you're going down from uh, 243,000 down to 17,000. So if there's anything left over in, ter in terms of programming, it seems like it's going to be gone by the, by the fourth year when it's a four-year grant. It's a four-year grant, but it's actually only three years of enforcement. The fourth year is to do uh, the data collection and um, the reports to finalize to send back to the federal government to see if our efforts were successful. So as far... So as far as the work, it's a three-year grant plus a fourth year with reports and stuff. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other Councilor Castro? Thank you. Mm. Good evening, Chief. Thank you for being here. I just wanted to say I was so pleased to sponsor this grant this evening. Um, I note in the project abstract that it's just a really cool uh, project. It's called Project Link Up Brockton. And as part of it, four uh, areas will be identified where there's high narcotics activity and also four other areas where there's firearms violations. And you, you, it's almost a multidisciplinary approach to it. And um, I'm just delighted by this because the focus is on quality of life, which is so important to me. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Councilor. Councilor Borgard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Chief, thanks for being here. Um, happy Thanksgiving. Um, I like the part here where you know it talks about providing um, services for limited English proficiency and ensuring equal treatment for faith-based organizations and constitutional protection. I mean, for uh, religion, and you know, as we have unfortunately seen in our nation, some pretty distressing activity at um, houses of worship in this nation. And I like um, the whole part about the safe street. Act. Um, these are all great programs, and I'm just hoping that we'll hear. I realize that the fourth year is to take all the data, but um, it mentions, you know, repeatedly in here about uh, Hillary, the um, crime analyst, and I'm just hoping that we could hear sometime, you know, some of the updates and where things are going as far as, you know, and what kind of data she's accumulating and where we, how would I say, need to. Um, move things along, you know, in a different fashion in other places where we're getting, you know, some great successes. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions and concerns? I believe a motion was made and seconded to send back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full City Council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you, Chief, and, and good luck with it, too. Thank you. It's great for the community. Thank you. Same to you. Next item, Madam Clerk. Ordered that the City Council accepts and approves the tax increment exemption agree agreement between the City and South Shore Property Management, LLC, of Torrey Street, Unit 3 of Brockton, Mass., relative to the market rate housing project proposed for 47 West Elm Street. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Robert May, Director, Planning, Jeffrey Anatoly, South Shore Property Management. I think Mr. Um yeah, I want Mr. I want Mr. Condon to be close as, as well, um, Mr. May, but I think all of you received a packet uh, this evening, and I think you've also may have had a chance at some point to maybe uh, even meet with uh, Joffrey over the, um, the uh, project in itself. So I, I think it's in, in depth, but I think what we're here to do is primarily look at the fact that, you know, we got a chance to give something a tax increment and then I think when I looked at the project and saw what was in front of me, I, I felt that I couldn't think of a, a better uh, uh, project to be put at, at that particular address, to be truthful with you. And, if we, uh, and I think if we don't do that, um, we're going to find ourselves with nothing there. And I think it's something that's going to be very, very workable for uh, what they're looking to do in the future. So, you know, just with, with my comments to it, I mean, I'll turn to Mr. May and uh, um, I'll let you uh, say a few words, few words. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. How are you? That's it. <laughs> uh, we're very pleased to be sponsoring this project. It was uh, identified very early on in our urban renewal plan, uh, which was adopted.
established by council and by the uh, Commonwealth. And the property was earlier um, acquired for tax title. And then uh, this council voted to send it to the uh, redevelopment authority to find a new developer, uh, of which Mr. Antoli and his company, uh, South Shore Properties, uh, is uh, that party. Uh, he'll be building a, or is proposing to build a 44 unit uh, residential development on the site. Uh, it's all market rate, and um, it, uh, he'll be heading to the uh, zoning board on December 11th to uh, get a variance in order for him to build on the site. But uh, we're very happy to see that this project is, is taken forward. Uh, tax increment uh, exemption is, is a required piece that goes along with the Housing Development Incentive Program, uh, which is a Massachusetts tax credit uh, for market rate uh, housing development in gateway cities. Uh, it is a very tight pot of money, very competitive, but this is a project that I think uh, that will score very well. Any questions that we have to answer? Council Monahan, yeah, this is your this is your award, so I'm gonna, even though you didn't put your hand up, I'm sure you're um, interested. So they know all about it. I don't have any questions to ask. No, I'm, just I'm sure you're interested no. in making sure that we... Uh, yeah, I agree totally with Rob. I mean, and also that the, his other project, uh, Jeffrey's other project in Ward 2 over at the old standard modern building on uh, Pleasant Street is also on market rate, and it's also completely filled. So um, it, it really, the quality of the work over there, what he did over there, cleaning up that area, uh, just outstanding, and I... With his record, track record so far, I think uh, this is going to be another great project in, uh, right downtown. So, and I think we'll have no problem at all filling that uh, building up. Yep, I, I agree with you. Councilor Nicastro, I saw your hand first. Go Thank ahead. you. Good evening, Mr. May. Thank you for being here. I just have a few questions on the Thai agreement, okay? On the second page, um, B2. There's a statement, the sponsor shall use good faith efforts to maintain the units as market rate residential housing for a minimum of 20 years. So I'm thrilled you're going to use good, they, they will use good faith efforts and that is what we want. I just wondered if there was wiggle room in that. There is a report that's due to the Commonwealth um, every year mm -hmm. in which he has to uh, report his um, uh, not containment, but uh, sorry, I'm actually lost for a word. Status? Status, thank you. That's a good one. <laughs> um, uh, with regards to uh, maintaining market rate, uh, should he fail that, the state has an option to work with us to take corrective action. Okay. That's laid out further in the development agreement. Okay. Um, and then, um, so that's the reporting yes, that's talked about in section six. Yes. Okay, and will the city council be copied on that? Uh, it can be if you would like. Yes, I would. Because it talks about sponsors submitting reports to the municipality not later than 30 days after June 30th, and I would, I would love it if that came to us as well. We can make that available for you. Okay. Very good. And um, also, let me see. I know on Exhibit 4, which is page 10, it states that the assessed value of this property, it says the residential portion, but all of this property will be residential. Isn't that right? It's on Exhibit 4? Yeah, and it's all. But it says the assessed value of the property will be $4 million. Yes. Well, isn't that dandy? Compared... But that is, that's the assessed value. The amount of money that he is investing in the project is uh, close to $12 million. And, and what is the source of that funding? Uh, in addition to the state tax credits, it's, it's private financing. Okay. Okay. And also, can you just take a minute to go over the table that's the very last part of this um, paperwork. Okay. Uh, what you have here is a schedule that shows uh, the uh, current value and, and current cost uh, or assessment of the property. Uh, the first two years, uh, 2019 to 2020, are construction and stabilization. The T 
GIE begins in, in the third year of the project, which is the first year of the GIE. That is a little bit difficult to, to understand sometimes, but that's year 2021. It then runs through 2035. Um, he's asking for a 71% exemption um, for the life of the project for the 15 years. Um, and um, you can see how the taxes pay out uh, through the end of the period. So if I'm reading it correctly, the amount of taxes to be paid, or the, amount, the assessed value available to the city is, or excuse me, taxes available to the city are in the neighborhood of uh, $20,000 in year one and up to $24,000 in year uh, 15 which is 2035. So why... The far right, -hand column. right. And why doesn't it start until 2021? Well, because there's not much value to the property in the first two years. Right now it's a piece of vacant land. The first two years it's under construction and before it's completely rented up, there's a reduced value on the property or on the construction in place. It's not until the property is what they call stabilized, which means it's full of renters that it has an actual market value of uh, four million dollars. And under this program, is that always a three-year wait, or is that what's estimated to be needed to get it built and to it, get it tenanted? It could uh, vary from project to project, depending on how quickly. Uh, if it's a rehab of an existing space, that all they're doing is changing out fixtures and, and uh, painting and doing some upgrades, that could be less than a year. Um, your project on uh, 47 Pleasant was about a year and a half to stabilization, yes? So 15 months from the point we started, the point was fully rented, and we have pretty much the same projections here. Mm -hmm. This is a ground up uh, development, so it will take a little bit longer to get to stabilization. And when you say that the, the reduction is 71%, that means he pays 71% of the tax? That means that he is exempt from 71% of the new tax. Now, this is also in the DIF district, so we're basically taking money out of the DIF pile. This is not money that has been generally allocated back to the city, but it's, it's moving from uh, one expense category to the other through the DIF process, because we're not collecting that uh, extra revenue. So he's responsible for 29% of the tax? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Borga, did you? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. May, for coming out this evening. I, um, how would I say it? Um, I'm supporting this project. I'm not really big on um, tax increment exemptions, uh, but at the same time, since he took you know an area of standard modern residence and turned it around, and it's enhanced the area and he's done it at market rate. This particular, I met with um, Joffrey and we went through this whole thing and what uh, really impressed me, quite frankly, it's really more luxury apartment. I was pleased with the, um, how would I say, the upgrade in technology and uh, that, that just really, uh, how would I say, it, impressed me. I mean, right now we have a piece of land that it's, it's unattractive, it's not costing us anything, but it seems like this is an investment in enhancing. What I was pleased with is he, had tol he told me that he had approached a couple of commercial um, entities, restaurants, or what have you, and because of certain things, they were either very pleased with the location they were in or were not prepared to move or you know try something out at this stage in you know the history of their business. What I'm also you know was impressed with is I know that you can get 20 years, but he chose 15 and moving in the right direction. And um, he's one of more than one project that's now being affected by our steel tariffs, and that's a little bit on the how would I say frustrating side. But no, I. I was very impressed with what I saw and to me, how would I say, he demonstrated and it seems like there's a whole lot of 
a, more of a, a feasibility understanding of what the needs are for the individuals that he is, you know, seeks to rent out to. So I'm going to support the project. What I thought was neat too is for the people that do have cars, the majority of them can just go right slide underneath the building and then march up there and never see a snowflake or a raindrop. And I think that's pretty cool. Hmm. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just um, wish them luck with the project. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Mr. Where's Mr. Mr. Condon? Just so everybody um, understands and, and uh, the public that's also listening, you know, what makes this any somewhat different than what we had some years ago, we call them tax in increment financing is what it was, TIF. To what you have, a, to, it's the same, it's the same. It's different because this is a mechanism for applying it to a residential project, whereas the, the old TIF program was for commercial. Commercial, oh, okay. But the rate of <coughs> is the same is that you've got a base value, which was mentioned as being about $141,000 at the moment, base assessed value. We continue to get taxes on that throughout the length of this project. Right. That doesn't go away. Right. And then the increase in value is a result of the um, investment is the portion which is either taxed or not taxed depending upon the exemption percentage. This is a simple project because it's 71% for the life of it. Right. Sometimes we've had declining fields, sorry to get a higher percentage, but this is 71% for the life. I think based on um, our discussions with Joffrey, he thinks he needs that level of, of mm -hmm. assistance from the city to make this project work, work. especially as interest rates are going up. But the um, benefit to the city could exceed what's in that table that uh, Councilor McCaslin because that has an estimate of property appreciation of only one and a half percent per year in there. If the property appreciation was greater than that, then obviously the exempt taxes are also greater, but as well, the uh, taxes that uh, we're going to get are going to be greater. And at the end of the day, we get 100% at the end of this project right. uh, exemption, we get 100% of all of those taxes. So I think a one and a half percent inflation estimate on property appreciation is right. Yeah, it, it it only it only makes sense, and it's it's just the only way. Uh, the reason I wanted to point that out is just that, you know, every time that we do this, there's people that think, well, they do not pay any taxes, but they do pay taxes. They they pay taxes. It's the same with all we had under TIFs, and a lot of those TIFs now have pretty much gone away. I don't think there's that many really left uh, that are on the open table. Most have, most have concluded. Those that haven't concluded are running out. Uh, and you know, is uh, when you get the taxes. Right. Next, uh, next month, you'll see that a portion of the new growth numbers that you'll see are, are you'll see. old uh, TIF programs mm -hmm. with the exemption percentages are for uh, <laughs> those increased taxes. Yeah, because I know, I know the, 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 well, it was Bernardi Auto, but now it's, it's McGovern, but that, that one should be running out in the next couple of years, to be truthful. I think it was one of the latest ones that, this you know. This is a good program because it's, uh, it's one of the only programs that the state gives to the Commonwealth. Gateway cities to assess them, assist them in developing yep. the residential market, especially in transit areas. So this is right downtown. I think everybody agrees that downtown needs assistance. Exactly. Uh, high level income, or moderate level income, market rate income in downtown will help other businesses grow in the downtown area. And so I think. It's so I can classify it as a no-brainer. Did I say that? I think I said strongly approved. I don't like yeah. to use the word no-brainer. Look. Well, I did, so I'll get in, I'll get in trouble. Says the matter, doesn't matter. <laughs> but um, in any case, any other motion for a favor recommendation. Second. Second. Motion on, on the motion, Council Sullivan. Question for Mr. Anatole. Sure, definitely. How are you? Good. Um, so I can answer your questions a little more in depth as well. Um, in regard to market rate housing, what's going to be doing for 20 years? Uh, I'll tell you. So I worked with Mass Housing in the last few months doing financial modeling, been in Workforce Housing 2.0. The reason I'm not doing it is because the numbers don't work. If I have uh, Low income housing here, rents are significantly lower. The project doesn't work. That's why I'm only zoning next month. It has to be market rates so to get the rents to make the numbers work here. So, not only do I have to do market rates, the age of requirements, the numbers won't work at uh, low income housing. You know, the threshold is uh, not for at least in 2019. So, that kind of I think should give you the what you're looking for. Okay. The housing will be maintained as market rate. It has to be for the numbers to work. Um, in regards to financing, I have financing for the project. I'm looking to start in April. Not one of the projects I'm looking to get financing. I'm hoping that someone's going to finance it. Financing is here. And I need to get started because of interest rates. You know, are on the rise. The Fed's already you know, stated that they're going to be, you know, over the next six months. So if that happens and I don't start in April, I'm going to lose my rate lock on the rate I have. So 
uh, regards to financing is not an issue. And then in just regards to the no issue building itself, they only have $10 million of funding a year for the entire state. It's almost nothing if you really think about it. You know, for all the gateway cities. So the last project got ten percent of the annual budget in each of the funds. In this project I'm looking to get twenty percent. I've done it. I've already talked to them, they're familiar with the project, we can get the funding for this, but it's not a program that I think is going to even be around after 2022. There's no guarantees it will be so many dates. All right, I'm going to reel you. Ba I'm going to reel you back in because I know you'll keep spinning. I know yeah, how you. Well, are. I just had two questions. He has a question so for I, you. I, I support what you're doing. I think you did a great job on Pleasant Street. Um, my my question is um, the the scope of this rendering. Is the church in favor of this? Just by looking at this, I mean, I know the steeple of the church is higher than the proposal, but have you spoken to the entities there? Okay. Okay, yeah, I think that'd be interesting just on the rendering. And then I was going to ask you the whole time. I drive by that every single morning, drop my kids off to school. You can stay at the formal Hotel Bryant for 57 bucks a night. So my thought is this. Do you have any concerns about some of the, uh, the residents that come out of that place and, and, and how that would have a negative impact potentially on your development project? Uh, I think this location is much better than 47 Pleasant Street. Um, I think the courthouse adds value to the project. Yep. Uh, it is a concern, but I think, like I said, the location, when I compare this place to where 47 Pleasant was, it's a much better location, and the market is there. So I think that this is going to you know, help clean up, maybe. Um, to, you know, it's going to help clean up, you know, I don't know what you're referring to. Okay. I wish you luck. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I, I, I think the point you're probably hoping or trying to say is that I. And I agree with you, too, to Councillor, because even when I saw everything and saw how the rendering was looking, you know, and how it was built and the closeness that it's going to be built right next to the Hotel Bryant, because right now when you come down that street, that's all you see. But I would, I would hope, I would hope that that would, you know, enlighten those people to start to say if they want to remain as a part of the process in downtown, then we need to start to do something a little different than what we have there at the Hotel Bryant. To be truthful with you, and I would hope that, and I would hope that would happen. I think the council will probably be watching that as well. But um, any other questions, uh, councilors? Anyone? Did I hear a motion, or was I? I made a motion second. Motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council with a favor recommendation, and we stand right behind you and wish you the best of luck. Thank you. <laughs> Councilors, uh, any, uh, I know it's um, Thanksgiving week. We're here, and then next thing you know, we're, we're off to Christmas. And don't forget that this Saturday, is the uh, holiday parade. I believe it uh, kicks off at 1 o'clock p.m. if I'm not mis mistaken. And uh, I might be kicking off with it, too. So um, I don't know if I can get you in, maybe to drive me in a convertible or something. And uh, be, sort, be, be sort of funky, Ann, you know, like you say, huh? Jamie, you weren't here when the council was talking about a drone. Oh, I wasn't here. Oh, no, you yeah. weren't here for that. We might have get a Christmas drone <laughs> around this <laughs> Go ahead, Councillor. Ask uh, Mr. Marion or somebody why we don't get our Santa Claus hats anymore. I'm interested about that. And that's been the second year, Thank to be you. truthful yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, of course, we have probably the others are still underneath at the City Hall, as you know what I mean, where we always had a habit of tucking them. But yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be, be careful because I don't want to say it won't be another year, but you know, but in any case, any other business, Council Beauregard? Uh, yes, I have a couple of um, announcements here. First of all, uh, I don't know if any of you were fortunate enough to be able to go to the Southeastern Regional Vogue Tech open house, uh, but once again, um, very impressive. I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds of people there and it was just really great and it's very encouraging because I mean how would I say it they work in conjunction with the Broughton Public School System and it's great that people are out there learning a whole lot of uh, how would I say skills that we need um, out you know in, in in society right now with a lot of people retiring etc and I mean I happen to go into the carpentry but uh, if it wasn't you know people were there with the plumbing people were there with the car repair, and you know, electronic engineering. I mean, things were really impressive and, and advanced. 
Meanwhile, a lot of you received an email that the library is going to be uh, host this program. Tomorrow evening is the first of uh, the, the you know, two parts. And they're inviting the public. And this is a whole memory program about the history and the, and the people and storyline. And it's one of only two libraries in the Commonwealth that received this opportunity. The other one was Boston. So it's pretty exciting. And they want to hear from everyone, people that have been here for decades and centuries, and people that just got here, and just the whole story. And I just think that's pretty neat to you know keep that because in the years to come there'll be other people looking at that. And also on um, as some of you might have gotten calls. Apparently there's been a yard waste issue that they're yes. backed up or something, and uh, people don't panic. Leave your yard waste out there. They will come and get it. So I just wanted to pass that on because I got a couple of calls. Yeah. In the month of November, you can put your yard waste out weekly. You don't yes. have to do it on your recycle. I know a lot of the, the people will call me on that, but that's that's a fact. But the other part was everything was behind because it was a holiday last week. It's going to be a holiday this week, and I guess they were doing well, catch up well, with that too. Well, yes. Not, not to, but I talked to uh, Mr. Carpenter today in regards to because mine went in and out, in and out twice, which I shouldn't have been doing. But <laughs> the issue was the fact that everybody all of a sudden heard snow was coming, and what happened? Everybody's yards were still filled with leaves, and there's some people put. 30 40 bags out the truck only holds up to a thousand so they have three trucks to do it they brought two trucks in extra and they have to go back to fall river in order to dump and by the time they get back and forth they were picking up saturday night uh, just up in uh, moraine street until 6 6 30 i think they were you know but um wow. mine did get picked up today not that i probably shouldn't have said that because i'm sure somebody else in the neighborhood didn't but still you know they're going around doing the best they can to get caught up this week oh, no, so no, no. They, they, okay was, you know, they they know, one other the point i think we want to make council board out is because you you're, you're going to uh, take a uh, um a tour through the uh, petronelli bil building with the commissioner well, with the building I'm, commissioner I'm hoping to, yes. Yeah. And, and uh, he was looking for a time, and he said he would open it up at uh, 10. You and I have decided 1 o'clock p.m., sure. and I will contact him. And if any other council Anyone wanted to go through wanting to join us? at that time, you know, they can to the Petronelli Bill. This coming Monday, be this Monday. I'm not sure what Council Borgard is looking for. Just be careful of the roof and the stairs and the walls. And, uh, well, uh, and the floors and the Marvin, oh. Hagler, Marvin Hagler might have left some boxing gloves hey, before he moved to Italy. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I was looking for. No, actually. But anyhow, <laughs> just to get back to it. If anybody wants to, um, you know, I'll talk to him. So, us, yes. And if that changes, then we'll, we'll put an email sure. out. But 1 o'clock would be Monday. Uh, what's Monday? The 26th, right? Yes. Yes. Already. Sixth or seventh? What's Monday? Twenty sixth. Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Any other business to come before us? And Councilman Castro, I'm sorry. A moment of personal privilege, yes, please. Right. I'm sorry. I'll be fat. I'll speak quickly. What? Um, the first thing is if you have the chance, take a drive through the Campello downtown area because it's been spruced up a bit by volunteers from the Keith Park Neighborhood Association who were out on Saturday planting little Christmas trees, little evergreen trees, excuse me, in barrel planters, and then dressing them up with some ribbon and bows. Um, they'll eventually, in early December, be decorated by children from the Gilmore School on a lantern walk. But it's really looking quite festive and, and a, a very nice neighborhood improvement. So that's my first thing. My second thing is my brother's keeper in Easton, which has a great presence here in Brockton, it's that time of year when they're looking for sponsors for families for Christmas to provide gifts for families that, that are struggling to do that themselves. And so all you have to do is call my brother's keeper. Their number is 508-238-7512. My family has been participating in this program since my kids were little. And when they were little, we would sign, I have two sons for those who don't know. We would sign up for a family with boys because you can actually specify, do you want a one or a two parent family? Do you want boys or girls or a mix? And so each of my children would be responsible for picking out gifts for, the, for one of the children in our family. And it was really fun and it was meaningful to them to be giving. And now that they're older and don't really support my endeavors in that way and they're also not around. I ask for families that have girls so that I can get um, my turn to buy pink pink stuff and girly stuff. So please consider uh, supporting a family by working with my brother's keeper. And the last thing is on Friday, November 30th at 530 at Raynham Dog Park, 
Promenade Lounge, the Charity Guild, which is a charity here in Brockton that is very close to my heart, will be sponsoring Let's Jingle and Mingle. And there will be entertainment by a group from Brockton High School called the Brockdabellas. And it is directed by Matt Cunningham from the high school. It's going to be a wonderful evening. Tickets are available at the Guild. Their phone number is 508-583-5280. I think you can also get them on the Guild's website just through the magic of Google. Look them up. Please consider joining us. Tickets are going fast. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Council. Mr. Chairman. And just before we, uh, just before we do, uh, do depart, um, uh, this evening I had to uh, attend a uh, wake for uh, my last surviving uncle that I that I had, and uh, all my first cousins now are we're, we're orphans. But in any case, um, I just want to take time to wish you all a, a great Thanksgiving holiday. Enjoy the meal. Enjoy each day because um, he, you know, he had a sickness, but we didn't expect it to, to happen so sudden. But in any case, we just don't know. So enjoy, uh, enjoy everything you do in the next uh, week, and uh, I hope you all have a great and blessed, uh, great Thanksgiving to all and to the people. All right. End of it. Anything else? We're done. Thank. You.